2017. So I kind of put the Niggerville um, series of videos on pause for a minute while I rethink that subject matter. But while in the process of rethinking and possibly redoing this up there, it dawned on me that, because I keep I get all these questions from people. They say, well, Walter, you live in Atlanta. You seem to be doing very well. You seem to be very successful. You seem to be doing okay. You're doing videos. You drive a nice car. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Let's talk about Walter's adventures in Niggerville. Um, I don't do drugs. I drink occasionally. I don't club and party. You will rarely see me out at a nightclub. It's very, maybe once or twice a year do I go out. I don't go to parties. I'm not partying. I don't do the club and scene. I'm not always up in the scene, no house. I don't have an entourage of clicker friends. So I've done all that shit. And I realized years ago that that shit will lead to some disastrous effect problems in your life. I focus on me. I get up in the morning time. I do a quick video. I go to the gym. I go to my finances. I do personal training. I sell supplements. I do YouTube videos. I do all kinds of stuff on the side to earn money. I focus on the dollar dollar bills, y'all. Not the niggas in the party. You don't. You cannot party your life away and expect to have success in life. It's not going to happen. I look at the vast majority of these people who come to Atlanta, they come here to party. They're in the clubs all night long. By the time they even get out that club and go home at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, I'm getting up from sleeping all night. I go to bed about 10, 11 o'clock at night. I take care of my business. I take care of my health. I take my blood pressure medicine. I need to take this morning. I need to pause the video. I'm not getting taken. I forgot to take this morning. Anyway, I take care of my health. I don't have any medical issues. I don't plan on having any medical issues. I don't live my life recklessly. I've made some huge mistakes in the past. Moving forward, I've learned from those mistakes so I don't have all these damn issues in my life. I avoid people. I avoid people. I avoid people. You don't see a bunch of people running around my videos in the background. I don't have an entourage of friends. People, make, people bring trouble into your life. I've learned that the hard way. I don't need a bunch of people sitting around here, eating up my food, drinking up my water, soaking up my air conditioning in here. I'm paying for this shit. I haven't asked anybody in the 30 years that I lived in that I haven't asked nobody for nothing. Not even my mother, my father, my brothers, my sisters, nobody. And I took two trips to, to jail, one trip. I've been to prison jail. I ain't came out and asked somebody for shit. I did six months in jail. In 2003, all my bills were paid while I sat in that jailhouse because I had money in the bank. Mortgages were paid, car notes were paid, everything was paid. I ask people for shit. I don't need to. And I'm not going to. This is turning into a rap video. I'm sick of this shit. How are you so successful? Because I handle my motherfucking business. That's why. I'm not out here asking for a fucking handout. I don't go asking people for shit. I take care of my business and I, and, I, and, I, and I handle business very well. When I ran that construction company, I did all, handled all kinds of people. I did that whole shit damn near by myself. I look at these guys coming here, they ain't got shit. Begging somebody for help. Don't forget, I'm lame and whack. I'm boring. Because I'm focused on trying to keep afloat, stay afloat here. I'm going to ask anybody for anything. I have no need to. I'm self-sufficient. It's amazing to me how people show up here and expect somebody to take, give them handouts and help them. I, do, I help people out of the kindness of my heart. Because I have it. Because I can. I don't have to. A lot of people are turning around and saying, no, you, you got to go. So when you ask these questions, how are you making it in that? I'm hustling my ass off in Atlanta. I'm not laid up in bed watching TV all day. I couldn't even tell you. I don't, even, I don't watch Power. Real Housewives. I don't watch TV. I turn on the news and it plays in the background. 
you never see me sitting here watching TV. Oh, and the haves and half knots is on. I don't need that shit. My, my life is already the haves and the half knots. I'm surprised by the haves and the half knots in my own damn life. I have it, they don't have it. I don't ask people for nothing. I don't need anything from anybody. It's not that I'm a prideful person, I just don't need it. I take care of my business. When people knock on my door, I ask for shit, I say, okay, this is odd. How did you end in this position? How are you asking me for shit? What were you doing? How'd you end up here? Most of the time, they're on drugs, 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 drugs. Everybody's, hey, drinking, smoking, smoking, dope. I'm doing weed. I wouldn't touch weed with a 10 foot pole. I'm not touching no fucking weed. I don't need it. But I've seen, the, I've seen people, weed ain't that bad. Everybody was fucking weed. I like smoking weed. They can't do shit with their fucking lives until they're smoking weed all damn day. I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. It's a setup by these white folks. It's a setup. There's weed and shit. You take the bait, your ass is in trouble. I don't touch it. I'm touching you. I drink a case and I like a little vodka and cranberry. Blah. And I don't buy the expensive shit. The most expensive vodka I buy is absolute. I get the cheaper stuff, pinnacle, if it's on sale. But if I'm really feeling myself, I'm going to get the absolute. My gay goes out of that. Why is the price of buying that expensive ass shit? You never catch me in these damn stores with all these expensive clothes and bullshit. Shoes that cost five and six hundred dollars will never touch my feet. I don't need them. I like cars. I'm looking at a brand new 2017 S Class. I like that cars. I've like owned some S Class before. I'm getting rid of this E Class. I have a 2017 E Class. I have three cars. I have a 2017 E Class, a 2017 BMW X5 truck, and a 2017 Jeep. I'm thinking about trading the 2017 E-Class for an S-Class. Upgrade. I'm paying for the shit. I'm not asking. I pay for my car notes, my insurance. The man. I'm paying for this. Where am I? Those are my babies. The only children I got. When I want to get rid of these children, I'm driving back off the dealership. I'm not asking anybody. No intentions to. I don't need to. You never see me on here talking about something. Begging or something. Won't you die? And he needs some money for his funeral. Mama, if I die tomorrow, do not give me no fancy as a funeral. Take that insurance policy in my nightstand and take your vacation. Cremate my ass. Matter of fact, the state will cremate me for free. You can take the ashes with your vacation. I'm fine with that. Don't throw no money on no funeral on no dead man who's not alive. I'm dead and gone. Take that money and go someplace else. Take your, get your passport, finally go someplace, travel, do something. $10,000 on a damn food. The devil is a motherfucking liar. Tell the state, Mr. Hampton wants to be cremated by you all. Finally get some free food, sons of bitches. Don't throw no free one for me. All the people that, hey, we miss Roger. Oh, Roger. Lies and shit. This phone ain't rain today yet. It's been quiet all fucking day. You want to talk to me? Call me now while I'm alive. You only call when they want something. Need something. Nobody calls and say, Walter, let's go to dinner. Let's go see a movie. Let's go take a walk and pee my park. Mm -mm -mm -mm. My cell phone, do my car bill, do key long, 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 long. Do not throw me no fancy funeral. Cremate me and take the ashes and dump them over the Mediterranean Sea while you're on that cruise over there. That's what I suggest people do. I'm going to ask people for nothing. I don't need anything. I spent 21 years with Earl. I ain't asked. That man for nothing. I bought the furniture, the TVs, every I bought furniture, every house we had. And asked him for nothing. I furnished those. I hung the armor. I bought the couches, tables, beds, everything. Cause that's what I wanted. I asked him for anything. I didn't say, you know, this man was doing this furniture over here. No, I, for what? I paid for it. Now relationships over. If you want to take some of it, take it and go. You need couch? Take it. I can give me another one. You want TV? Snatch it off the wall. It's working. Take it. I'm fine. I can get another one. I don't care. Just go. That's how I feel. Sometimes you wake up. You get tired of dealing with foolish people and foolish shit and foolish ideas and foolishness and foolishness and nigga shit. Living in niggas how you crazy as fucking hell. Yeah, I'm rethinking my series on Niggaville. Maybe I didn't do it. Maybe I didn't go deep enough. Maybe I need to go deeper. 
makes you wonder about crazy people. This is just orange juice. It should be some orange juice and vodka. But it's 11 o'clock in the morning. I ain't ready for that yet. I don't ask people for any goddamn thing. I don't have a need to. I ask you for shit. You never ask me or hear me ask you for any damn thing. Beg of somebody for something. Walter, how do you survive this land? I survive on my own. Took off my ass and handle my fucking business. Sitting around begging somebody for shit. I need this. I need that. Get up in the morning. it. Figure it out. Cut grass. Wake leaves. Do something. I have a lot of respect for these Hispanics that come here from different places. They come here with nothing. But they survive and live like kings and queens. But you niggas been here forever and you ain't got shit. It is aggravating. Can't go to the grocery store, somebody. Begging, 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 begging. Now give them a change in my car. Take it. Leave me the fuck alone. What's wrong with these people? They've learned, black folks haven't learned to be self sufficient in Niggerville. So they're stuck. I got a family full of niggas who are stuck. Begging. You loan them some money, you never get it back. You have to chase their asses to the end of the earth. And after they ring this phone off the fucking hook, and after they get it, you don't hear from them bitches, you don't hear from them no more. The Jay needs some more. I don't ask anybody for anything. I don't call anybody asking for nothing. There's no need to. I learned a long time ago, if you're going to survive in America, you better figure out how to survive on your fucking own. People can't do that, though. Walter, how are you surviving in the ladder? What the fuck you worried about how I'm surviving in the ladder? I ain't asked your ass for yet. I ain't asked you for a bottle of fucking water. I got a case full of water here. I ask people for nothing. I don't need you to give me a ride tomorrow. I can drive myself. I don't need you to drop me off at the mall. I'll take you to a job. Right now, have I ever been at a point in my life that I might have needed some help? Yeah. I figured it out. I didn't go begging anybody for shit. That's all some people know. They don't have, know how to be self-sufficient. So when you look around Atlanta, you got a bunch of motherfuckers who do not know how to survive on their own. How could you come to Atlanta with no job, no income, no money, no nothing, and suspect to survive? Oh, because you expect to lay up on somebody's couch for free. Eat up their food and soak up their air conditioning. I've seen this shit. Too many times to count. The job market in Atlanta sucks. They don't pay you shit. Why would you come here? To starve. Oh, because you don't lay on somebody's couch and eat their shit and drink up their water and eat their food and lay up their air conditioning any damn way and take your little petty paycheck you're getting and go buy you some sandals. So you can go to the club on the weekends. Niggerville is not a nice place to live. You have to deal with this foolishness and deal with this ignorance. But I'm lame and whack. I'm boring. I don't want to do drugs. I'm not spending my money on drugs. I'm not going to get high. There's no need to get high. See, I don't have to get high to run away from my life. It ain't that bad. As long as I stay away from the bullshit, I'm okay. I know not to stay. And I know that you stay out of the clubs, the parties, the functions, the toxic people. You know, they say, I'm to I stay away from them motherfuckers. I had friends that was drinking and doping and doing drugs all night long. I used to sit there and stare at their ass. And now I don't go around them. There is no need for me to. I got up this morning. Somebody woke me up. They had borrowed some money from me. Someone had borrowed some money from me. So I got up this morning. They said they had the money. I said, well, where are you? They said they're at home. I said, I'll be there in a few minutes. I got up, jumped in the clothes. Said, you pay back some money you owe me that's not heard of. I said, let me get my ass up and get this money. I said, will you be there? They said, yes, I'm there. I raised my ass up and got that money they owe me. I walked through the door to the filthiest house I've ever seen in my entire life. Filthy! How can people live in filth like this? I'm looking around like that. The 
this is how you're living in here. This should stack their mile high. But every time I look on Instagram, you have to pull up. Every time I see you dressed in these nice clothes, this is my first time stepping foot in this man's house. It was filthy. I didn't look down. Oh, I said, little junkie in here. Little junkie. The place was filthy. I took my money. I'm counting. Oh, it's a hundred short. When will I get there? A hundred dollars. Give me another week. Glad I got what I got, though. I said, fine. Stuck it in my wallet. I don't ask anybody for nothing. Maybe that's how I survived here so long, because I know I have to be self sufficient. When I take my money, I put it in the bank. I don't put it in Linux Mall. I need these other funky stores around town. You won't catch me walking through Linux with bags and bags and bags of crap. Never. I don't waste my money. It's hard to come by. So I stick it in the bank. Yeah, I have a car finish. Sue me. These cars are sitting outside with low miles. I can get rid of them anytime I want to. I've had this Mercedes going on eight, nine months. It's only got about 5,000 miles on it. I took it in there and said, why are your miles so low? You can give this car worth the money. I said, I know it is. I'm a straight of that S-Class work over there. And I'll work out the deal. I don't ask anyone for anything. I never have. I don't mind helping my mother. She brought me into this world. Mama calls me, I say, what do you need? I get her. She's asked, you know, every one of my credit cards. I said, Mom, you got the credit card, go use it. You got the JC Penney's, you got the Macy's, you got the American Express, you got the Visa, you got everything you need in your wallet, your purse. Go use it. You have to call me. Go use it. I gave you a scratch for a reason. I just want to get a freaking well, go. But you better spend that shit on them other old niggas over there. You only. You, Alberta Hampton. But I wanted to get, no, mama, I just told you. You, not them. You can go buy whatever you want. I make express has no limit. But you run it up, though, on these niggas. And you can go buy something for yourself. You need some clothes, go buy them. My mother loves these fancy wigs. Go get you one. Treat yourself. You want some new shoes? Go. Get that card detail out, too. We got a brand new 2017 card. Detail it. You got a card, a credit card in your wallet. Take it to the detail shop so they can clean it. Because the mother niggas ain't going to take care of it over there for you. Can't get it and go get it cleaned. Give my mother whatever she wants. Wish my father was alive. I'd give him whatever he wanted. But he's not. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. I'm grateful for my experiences with my father. So I give my mother what she wants. I haven't, I, I haven't been the easiest person to deal with in her. At all my mother's children, I think I probably been the person who gave her the most heartache. I know for a fact. So, I'll take care of her. I don't mind. It's quiet here because Earl is no longer here. I'm not ready really to go into the details of that. But it's time for us to move forward. We wasted too much of our lives together. Too much hard and fussing and fighting over nothing. This is too much. It's never going to get better. We're wasting valuable time. Don't make the mistakes that I made. 21 years is a long time to be with somebody that should have ended 10 years, a decade ago. But you didn't learn. I'm feeling better with him gone. Life goes, feels brighter. There's a future. There's happiness. I was held back too much. Couldn't do the things I wanted to do. Fussing and fighting with this fool over 
absolutely nothing. Nothing. No, I remember one time we went to a drive-in theater many years ago. And then we were in a drive-in theater and I had a brand new Ford Expedition. There was a car to our right, a car to our left, you know, drive-in theater. I don't know if you ever been to one. The car is cool. We watch the movies. Me and Earl getting we were having a conversation and Earl reaches over and hits me. <laughs> we got to fighting in that car, in that driving theater. This, this is in Niggerville. This is when I was a nigga in Niggerville. Didn't know no matter. I never forget this. The woman in the car next to me, so her her husband or begin to say something. And she told him to shut up. She wanted to hear this. Now, the corner of my eye, I could see her just. It, the car around us turned down their radios to watch me and Earl go at it. Because they were entertained, we in Niggerville. Forget the movie, the multi million dollar production on the big screen. We watching some niggas go at it. Look at them. Wow, you see this shit? Finally, we slow down. Because we almost tore that damn truck up over there. He hit me, I hit him back. We were going at it. Not, it was not. I was a nigga in Niggerville. That's how you handle things. I was young and foolish. I know better now. The movie went off into intermission. I went to the bathroom. The lady next in the car, she got out of car. She saw me. She walked, as I was walking to the bathroom, she said, Are you okay? I said, Yeah, I'm fine. I said, I was laughing. I said, Okay. She saw the bruises on my face. She's looking at me. She's like, Okay. She said, Do you, Is he drunk? Because I see him drinking over there. She said, She literally said, She sat me. Watch this thing, whole thing. She said, you need to get away from him. I didn't take this woman's advice. Complete stranger in the movie theater driving thing. He said, you need to get away from him. She touched my face. I put in words. But I stayed foolishly. There's so many things that took place that should never have happened. But I didn't know any better. I was an everyday citizen in Niggerville. I thought this was the way things were supposed to be. No, I never saw my mother and father fight. But my parents were not in a gay relationship either. So I was in uncharted territory. I know better now. We don't allow somebody to hurt your heart. You hang around for it. Foolish mistake on my behalf. You don't let somebody continuously, mentally and physically abuse you. And you hang around for this bullshit. You don't do it under any circumstances. But it's all good. There's a bright future ahead. I'm happy. Y'all, I'm happy. Y'all just don't know how happy I am. I am very happy. I'm planning the next like, vacation. I'm planning on finding whatever furniture he wants to take out this house with him. And he goes, I'm buying me some new shit. Because I can afford it. I'm not asking anybody for anything. I ask myself for peace and love from Walter. I don't think I'm expecting much from, from, from myself. Anyway, I am going to continue the series on Niggerville. This is kind of like a break. I get my thoughts together. Y'all, if you like my videos, share them with family members and friends. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm just an everyday person here. We all have issues and problems in our lives. I share mine. I'm criticized for that. I, I know life isn't perfect for any of us. I know there are issues for us all to have to get through. I'm hoping by sharing my experience, people learn and grow. That's what I'm hoping. Anyway, it is now. Whew, it is Wednesday. 
August 23rd, the year 2017. So, we shall see. Um, but in the meanwhile, I think people better just get prepared for the overall winter. I got my little groceries and stuff and I was, I don't know what I was thinking when my mother moved in here. I was thinking, oh, mama's moving in. It's going to be fun. We got to sit down and talk to so videos. And it's going to be on But it, it, it's not working out that way. But it's other plans. So I'm, I had told her her car is filled with all this junk. Y'all. I was like, I said, okay, what is going on? I just did. You know, I never understood what was going on my mother's head. Now I have a clearer idea of what's happening. So, and I now I see why she's got these storage bins, this car full of junk, or my sister's house, the bedroom was full of stuff. I always tell my sister, why don't I go in there and clean that stuff up? And I guess my sister had attempted to help clean up the bedroom, but my mother was in there raising hell because she's touching that stuff, her valuables. What valuables? What is this mess? So, she left, she left a bunch of stuff over there at my sister's house, literally in the garage. I don't know why my sister allowed my mother to harbor all the stuff in the garage and her bed. I just don't get it. Take that stuff and I just sort of took that stuff and then she's gone and I haul that mess away, honey. I don't even know most of it is just junk that she's collected from God knows where. So I, I would all do about it. Unless my sister wants to, uh, me to come over there and help now that my mother's out of this, I don't know, I, we got to sort through, I don't know sort through stuff, honey, I don't know, ain't nothing. We're going to bag it up and toss it. That's what we're going to do. Uh, so, since she's over here, that gives her opportunity to clean up the, that room. She said that room was a mess. I said, okay. I don't know. I don't live there. Every time I come over there, mama come out the room, hey, close the door. I said, okay, brother. <laughs> What's going on? I'm trying to peek in. What's going on there? I can't see shit. So, my sisters kind of saw what was going on in there, and then they said, Mama, lock the door. I said, oh, you need to get, break that lock on that door. The door is locked over there now. I said, she, she left the room. Mama ran back the house and locked the door. I said, she said, Michelle, my sister said she can't get in there yet. And I said, well, you need to get on in there and get to hauling that mess up out of there while you got the boys over there. So, we shall see. It's a lot of fun dealing with Hampton. She's a, she's a, she's a hoot. Yeah, she needs something else. Yeah, she's giving out Bibles. She got books of Bibles. I'm giving these Bibles out today. I said, where do these Bibles come from? I got a lot. Somebody gave her a bunch of Bibles. And she's about to give them out. I looked at the books. I almost said something this morning, but I said, I ain't going to ruin her day. I said, my mom, I see you get back. And she had a bunch of Bibles. A big old thing. Of, I'm like, where the hell these books come from? You brought some things? I said, I gave them to me. We got the monitor the bank account to make sure she ain't at the Bible store buying Bibles. She's like, what are they doing? She can buy 8,000 Bibles. What the hell is she going to do with this shit? But anyway, enough of this happening. She got some issues. We all got issues. Yeah, but um, it's quiet over here now. I, mean, I was hoping that um, I had to remind mom about my we have a rule over here in the south, so that I like peace over here, mom. Just peace. I don't want arguing and fussing and fighting over nothing that we can't do nothing about. And I've tried to explain this on multiple occasions. I don't hear you this arguing back and forth like that took place over my sister's house. I this, we don't do that over here. We, we you continue to argue, you're gonna get drugged up over here and put to sleep. I know how to put something in that damn coffee. My God, I'm over there laid up on the couch. Well, what happened to me? I, was, I thought I was ready to go get these Bibles. I was sitting there. I don't even, even see the past five hours on the couch watching, watching Wendy Williams. I put on the Wendy Williams channel. Um, but we run let her watch that. I don't, I like, in, in, I can say it. I, I know I've said this a couple times in this video, but I love being at home. I enjoy my home. Um, I like making my home nice and comfortable coming in. And I got, now I got a patio. I can go back to grilling food and, you know, sitting outside, you know, the weather ain't that bad. And yesterday was warm enough, we could have sat outside on the patio and enjoyed the birds chirping and the Mexicans raking the leaves and stuff. It's just nice outside. Well, right by the pool, and the pool's closed right now. But there's a lot of stuff that my mother could be doing with her time besides needlessly chasing behind people. This is my problem. And I tried to explain this to my mother when we got into it. These people that she's trying to help don't want no help. 
they, they every everything she gives them, whether it's food or money or whatever, they're trying to get the drugs. They're not trying to come off the streets. Well, somebody got to care for them. Let them care for themselves. Let them figure that out on their own. And I don't think she understands this. So she's so busy trying to help these people. It's been like this for years. Years, y'all. This is not new. This has been going on for years. My mother dealing with these homeless people. And it's got to the point. When she was younger, okay, fine. But now, I don't like this. You're too old. Leave them alone. It's too dangerous. You know, then we got the coronavirus out here eating people. Come on now. Let's leave these people alone. Write a check from a distance, love him from TV, give him some way back on your way back like I do. Yeah, I'm about to beat on by. Shit, I ain't gonna pull over there. What y'all need? No, no, none no, of that. So she had to stop this nonsense. But I'm giving her an opportunity. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to stop. You know, I don't want to snatch the car. I mean, her car is going to go to the shop. I she had a couple of deeds and dits in there. So anyway, so I'm putting that in the shop. I need to, I need to put my car in the shop. Shit, it's time for service. Speaking of her car. Anyway, I know this video is all over the place. I didn't even do the topic I was going to do. But I'm, I'm just, I was rather disturbed. I see my mother run about here so early this morning. It was freezing cold and she just hollered at me. I'm like, where are you going? It's cold outside. Shit, sit down someplace. I guess she just determined for some reason. I don't get it. But anyway. There's a lot longer than the morning. I didn't even talk about what I'm going to talk about. It's Thursday, December 10th. I guess I'll do another one later, y'all. Give me some more coffee and go to the bathroom. It's Thursday, December 10th. To the year We're still in the midst of the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. It seems to be improving at least here in the United States. So, anyway, my mother, my mother is extremely busy. She constantly texts messages all day every day about this religious mess. God's blessing you, the blood of Jesus, all kinds of crazy mess. Even though I have repeatedly asked my mother not to send me those types of texts. I'm atheist. I don't believe in the blood of Jesus. I mean, I don't believe in none of this stuff. I never have. My mother, like many black women, has insisted on enforcing um, um Forcing her religious beliefs onto her children, regardless of how they feel about it. I've asked repeatedly asked my mother, I'm atheist. I don't believe in this nonsense. I've never believed this nonsense. Will you please take that mess someplace and have a seat and quit texting me this mess and nonsense all day long? It just is crazy. My mother would text out a text early morning, late. It's like, okay, when is this, when is, what do you what do you think sending text messages are gonna do that's not gonna pay the bills over here? And we're certainly not paying the bills over there for her, since I'm insisting her paying the bills over there. I don't mind helping my mother out financially, but it's starting to get to be a very headache when my mother does what she wants to do all day long. Regardless if you tell her not to do something or something might not be good for you, she does it any damn way. And then I'm left the person to resolve this or fix what's going on. Not Jesus. So she's, she's constantly screaming to Jesus and the blood of Jesus and God and all this other crazy mess. None of that shit exists. It's okay for y'all to believe in religion. Fine. It's my, that's my mother's belief. She want to live fine, fine. But don't drag me into your nightmare. Don't drag, drag me into your fantasy world. Quit dragging people into the bullshit you believe in. That's your beliefs. Not mine, Miss Hampton. I repeatedly told my mother this over and over and over, and she refuses to see the damage that her religious beliefs have done to her own children, her own family, and to herself. She won't accept it. And she walks around a fantasy world. A fantasy. That Jesus motherfucker don't exist. Never have. And if you believe in this shit, you're a fool. But you're welcome to believe in all you want to believe in. But it's ridiculous. My mother believes in this message that it has always been her trying to force her religious beliefs onto other people. If you want to believe in that nonsense, fine, believe in it. But quit trying to force everybody around you to believe in shit that you believe in. 
I'm not trying to believe you, force you all to believe that this green fake plant here is, is a friend of mine. That's just my belief. He's a good friend of mine. He ain't stabbed me in my back and said nothing bad to me since he's been here in the house. Since he's here, it don't, don't bother me at all. Just dust him off not too long ago and the side up real nice. But that's my belief. That this pretty green plant ain't bothering me. I'm not introducing everybody that walks through my door to this pretty green fake plastic plant behind me saying, Meet Jonathan. Or whatever the name I gave it. I keep forgetting. My Lord and Savior. It's ridiculous. If you want to believe whatever you want to believe, man, that's fine. But you don't have to drag everybody around you into your black hole of fantasy land that takes you nowhere. I have to stay firmly rooted in reality. And reality means I have to get up and earn a living to pay these bills over here and do whatever I have to do to take care of my mother and my situation. No one's going to come to me. Now, prayer ain't gonna do shit. But at make my, getting on my knees, prayer ain't gonna do nothing but make my knees ashy. I'd have to keep lotion my knees all day long because I've been praying. I don't give I don't have time for that nonsense. You all are welcome to pray. My mother's welcome to pray. But you ain't got to pray for me. I don't want her running into my line of there prayer. Why are you, uh, what, Ms. Hamilton? Get out with this foolishness. I don't want to hear it. And this is what she does day in, day out, day in, day out. So she's always done her entire life. And she's pushed so many people away from her. With me. You know, she's sitting in this apartment and she got by herself and she was determined to have this apartment fine. But nobody's going to come over there. You know, you're not welcoming, welcoming people in. It's okay for you to have your religious beliefs or whatever you want to believe in. That's fine. But for friends and family members should not have to be drugged, kicking and screaming into believing what you believe in. I just don't understand it. Go do what you want to do. Go pray to Jesus, God, whatever, pray. What? Do whatever you want to do. Do what makes you happy. But I'm certainly over here doing what makes me happy. And pray to a, 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 a fake, man-made religious entity ain't making me happy. I got to get up and take care of reality over here, deal with the real world. And I, so, I it, it angers me. I see so many black families caught up in this fake-ass bullshit of religion and how destructive it is to them, and they don't get it. So these families... Pushing education, math, science, computers, literacy, having to read, write, learn a different language, travel, do places to learn, enjoy the world that we live on. They yeah, have them in churches every Sunday screaming to Jesus, expecting some fucking miracle to happen. It ain't gonna happen. It's the most, it's, to me, it's idiotic. There's always these black women. They lead the, the whole thing. They lead the whole family off a cliff. And they think that they're doing something right. The vast majority of black men I know are not involved in religious beliefs unless they are some of them are undercover homosexual. It is very rare that I know, very, very rare for me to know, and, I, and I'm just speaking from my experiences here, I don't know too many straight black men who believe in this Jesus, God, and bullshit. They don't believe in this mess. They don't have time for it. They got to take care of bills, and they got to feed their family and take care of those and take care of their family. I find that most of these people who are very religious, like I said, this is my experience, they tend to be undercover gay guys who are involved, deeply involved in religion. I don't know why. Well, I'm not an undercover gay man. I'm not involved in nobody's fake, fucked up ass religion. You can quote me on that. I couldn't be more atheist than I love. I don't have time for that mess. I'm sitting here making, having a cup of coffee. I'm about to get him, make me some breakfast, and prepare to go to the gym and get my day started. But today, it's been a long. I feel a whole lot better today than I did the last few days. I did. Uh, my allergies seem to be improving. The rain the past few days, and the pollen seems to be letting up. So my allergies seem to have improved significantly. Of that. And prayer was going to fix these allergy problems. And I've always felt that people, uh, from my own personal experience, the most religious people, including my mother, are the most troubled souls on this planet. You would think that religion would have brought some comfort, peace, and joy, but it doesn't. It don't. 
I mean, what do y'all, uh, what, what, okay. All that prayer and all that studying that Bible for the last 30 years, my mother studied that Bible forever and ever and ever. She studied that Bible forever. I mean, forever. She should be happy. She, she knows it back and forth. She, she, every time I go, she's got a Bible spread out, she's reading it. But she can't open up, but she can't work this laptop computer. She would have been better off learning how to work a laptop computer and teaching her grandchildren and great grandchildren how to use a computer versus that worthless centuries old book sitting in there that they ain't teaching her shit. But getting on everybody's nerves. Kind of odd that my mother has all this family here. Nobody's been over there with me to her new place. Her own children avoid her religion because they can't stand her religious beliefs. Because she's constantly trying to force this down our throats. And she's been trying to do this since we were little babies. But it ain't working. At least it didn't work for me. And it's not working for a lot of people. And religion doesn't provide the comfort for everybody. And it's something to get it out of it. Me going to the gym workout works out. Working out provides me comfort. It helps me to feel better. This is not for everybody. So I'm not trying to force, force it down anybody's throat. I don't care what you do. Just don't come knock on my door and come sit on my couch. I reached a point in my life where I don't need an entourage of people around me. I have all these people say, I want to be around you. We're going to be friends. Like, no, 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 no. I like my quiet time over here by myself. I like to be able to sit here, watch TV, make some coffee, eat some food, enjoy my... I, I just like being here. I don't have to have an uh, entire entourage of people surrounding me to bring me joy. Because typically they don't bring joy, they bring chaos and confusion. And I'm just too old to really put up with that bullshit. I have a lot of friends who constantly call, we're going to go here, we're going to go, I don't have time for that mess, y'all. I don't want to be bothered. And, you know, I don't particularly get a joy out of sitting at a table with, with a whole bunch of people. I've been those type of events, but I don't, I don't need. Some people gonna do it every week. Can't have an entourage of people sitting around them. Not me. I don't need all that. I would rather be with one person or by myself at a restaurant. I've learned to do a lot over the past decade. I've learned to do a lot of stuff by myself and enjoy the time alone peacefully. And sometimes I go places. Everybody's running. Walk, 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 walk. I'm just thinking, oh God, I just. And then I come home, I can close my door, away from the world, you know, and not be bothered. I like to sit on my patio outside. The weather's cool right now, so I've been sitting outside on the patio enjoying meals and stuff, eating. I don't want to be sitting by the pool. We have a pool over here. Ain't nobody here. They can start cleaning the pool. I guess they get ready for me. The end of this month, I probably open up Memorial Weekend. We realize Memorial Weekend is so close. Um... Do whatever makes you happy. I don't care what it is. But what brings happiness and joy to your world may not bring happiness and joy to someone else's world. So don't force stuff down people's throats. Don't force yourself onto people. And I've had some people I've met over the past few years who tried to force themselves into my life. I'm just like, what is going on here? After I've repeatedly said, I like friends from a distance. For a variety of reasons. You know, if you've been stabbed in the back for so long by so many people, you begin to say, okay, enough. Every time you open up this door, somebody walks in there and they have these ulterior motives that you may not be aware of at first. But once you do wake up and see, I've learned that to eliminate dealing with people like that and these all these ulterior motives and the backstab and all that stuff, I don't let me know. And that eliminates that problem. I take full responsibility of allowing people into my home and into my life. They ain't had no business being there. I was the food for allowing it. That shit to happen. I'm not allowing it to happen anymore. And some people just want to be, just want to be involved and keep up so much mess. They just want to keep up so much mess. But anyway, my mother and her religious beliefs have harmed her. Because now she's at an age where she wants to enjoy life and be around people and do stuff, but everybody's running from her because she's still trying to force this mess down people's throats. She's still trying to 
pray for people, or put oil on people's foreheads, and do all this crazy stuff. And it's like, what is going on with him? It's happening. We were used, to, and, she, she, and she's not getting better. She's getting worse as she gets older. She hasn't accepted the fact that her religious beliefs are just her beliefs. You know, that's just, that's just it. Go and enjoy life. I've told my mother, you travel, go to the beach, do stuff. So I was running around here trying to pray for all these people who don't give a damn about you. Pray for yourself. Seek your own salvation. Worry about your own salvation. I think that anybody, all religious people need to worry about their own black ass getting to heaven. I don't think, I know for a fact heaven don't exist. This is y'all insist on believing in that nonsense. Worry about your own damn black ass getting into heaven. Quit worrying about other folks. Quit worry about them. Whatever happened to them, uh, between the, the, them and whoever, ain't got shit to do with your black ass. Or white ass, or Hispanic ass, or Mexican ass. It don't matter. I've noticed that religious people consistently trying to drag everybody with them off into la la land. I don't want to be there. I want to be here in reality, drinking some uh, nice, delicious coffee, cup of coffee, watching CNN with this fake plant behind me. That's fine with me. That's the only fakeness I want in my life right about now. Not some deity that's going to come to me and, and save my life. No, no. But anyway, today is going to be a beautiful Tuesday. I'm, I, you know, I'm so sick of that, y'all. Y'all just don't know how tired of that I am. And I'm beginning to, I was reaching a point where I've exhausted myself here. Um, and I want out by any means necessary. And, you know, I was looking at people, I'm looking at all these people about these homes here in Atlanta being home. I don't want a house in Atlanta. That's just dirt fucking cheap. But I'm looking at a lot of my friends to buy this real estate. Boy, they just don't know what they're getting themselves into. Mm-hmm. I could, I'm could. renting because I want to, I'm sure I'm looking for my escape from Atlanta. Looking for my escape to get the hell on for this motherfucking place. My oversight. I've been looking at stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm plotting and planning over here. Y'all better believe I'm drawing maps out <laughs> on the computer looking for the way, way out. <laughs> I'm searching another I'm looking how to escape Atlanta. And I'm coming up with a game plan. And I can't sit here no more. But anyway, I'm, 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 I'm researching and looking. I know where I want to go. I know where I want to go. At least I think I know where I want to go. It won't hurt you go and find out where I want to go. Shit, that's a damn sure. Um, but yeah, I might have to do something. Because I find myself living here in Atlanta is just, um, I'm over it. I've been here since 1989. I'm, I'm sick of this place, y'all. And I, oh, go walk the belt line. I'm like, go walk the belt line. Fuck that damn belt line. Uh, get on I2, get on 75 southbound. That's what I want to do. Is, you know, get the fuck up out of this motherfucker. Uh, I, I, a lot of stuff that people enjoy doing here in Atlanta. I, yeah, I'm over it. Over it. Over it. I just want to go someplace where it's nice and beautiful. There's a beach and nice water and an ocean and a park. You know, I just want to enjoy life. And I don't really necessarily, a lot of people say, well, you know, I, I'm not one of these people. Like I said, I don't have to be surrounded by a bunch of people. So I can move to another city and not know nobody. Be just fine. Just I don't like to find my way to a grocery store. And find my way back around to do the things I like to do at GM or grocery store, marry, make a little, earn a little living, and bring my ass back home. That's it. But anyway, I guess this is my grouchy video. It's not really a rant video. You know, it's just a lot of stuff that was been on my mind as I sit here. Um, and I figure out a path out of Georgia. I was watching the news. And I see all these people saying that the crime has risen dramatically across the United States. And they, 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 there seems to be this mis, this, this, this false belief that the more police you put out there, it's going to bring down the crime rate. I don't see how that's possible. 
Because one of the police gonna stand by everybody with a gun and make sure they don't use it to shoot nobody. They're gonna stand everybody that's by everybody who's attempting. Uh, we'd have to have one police officer per person. Is that what we plan on doing? That's how we gonna bring the crime rate down. A police officer outside everybody's house watching, monitoring what you're doing inside there. Come on now, y'all. That's not gonna work. We have to begin dealing with things, a lot of stuff that we're not dealing with in this country. <laughs> when it comes to, to drug and alcohol abuse, mental illness that we have not tackled, this, this, this belief that guns are, um, everyone has to have one. I mean, it's just something's not really making sense here. America's headed down a dangerous path, as we saw when we saw the crazy white folks run up in that Capitol thinking that Donald Trump didn't go overturn the election. Still waiting, waiting for them to get their life in prison sentence and see what happens. But this country is going down a path of ignorance and intolerance, fueled by false religious beliefs and just ignorance and hate disguised by uh, you know it's even hard to and I don't even think they're disguising their hate anymore it's in ignorance it's just they did not it's, I'm, it's just astounding to me but yeah I'm, I have an idea where I want to go to so I can get away from all this foolishness so I have to deal with these crazy people sometimes you get tired of being surrounded by crazy people there's too many crazy people running around here. You just don't want to be bothered. Sometimes you just don't want to be bothered. But anyway, I'm about to make me some breakfast and get my day started. It's, it's this day. I just, yeah, I literally sat on this couch for the past two hours watching TV. I don't know why. I just plopped down on the couch. and I was supposed to make this video two hours ago. And I was just sitting there and watching TV. If you like my videos, click like, share them with family members and friends. And I'm just going to sit here and have another cup of coffee and make some breakfast and just be done. Start my day. I'm out of here. Today is Tuesday, May 11th. The year is Tuesday.